Hey guys, Jarvis Cyclone FPV. I got a uh, much of my mom's bird, so you're gonna hear it chirping in the background, so sorry. Uh, anyways, uh, we are getting ready to do some uh, customer work here, so I'm gonna just go ahead and switch this over, do a picture in picture, boom, there we go. So we're working on Aero 3, it's a brand new one. We told the customer if you order, we go ahead and uh, do the labor to get his um, uh, receiver set up. So this customer uh, decided to go with a RXSR. So we're gonna go ahead and knock that out. All right, and these we just got these RXSRs in. So thank you to FreeSky, thanks to Dustin and Ron over at FreeSky for helping us out. So here's what we're gonna do. All right, so I'm gonna take the arrow out. All right. Let me get my screwdriver set up. Let's see which one we're gonna go with here. Oh, that'll work. All right, so Free Sky is pretty cool. Uh, sorry, uh, HDRC is pretty cool about this. They, even though you get a uh, plug and play, they uh, put the wires in at least, so that that works out pretty well. Um, and Free Sky does give you all the cables you need to do your firmware updates and such. So these we're going to leave and make sure the customer gets these. Um, the only difference is that on this particular unit. Uh, the plug here, you can remove the plug and solder it directly. I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm going to use the plug because uh, the customer may want to do his own firmware updates down the road. So just to explain to you what we're doing here um, on these cables, and we've done this before, uh, and let me show you this pamphlet here. So all I care about is this piece right here. So if you look at this pamphlet, you've got ground, 5 volt, S port, S bus out, S bus in, right? So if you're looking at it like this, uh, the white one is going to be your S bus in, so we're not going to use that, all right? And then you've got your S bus out, which is your green one. That is what you are going to use. And then your S port would be for updates and other things, so we're going to hold that aside for right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to twist these two together, all right? I'm just going to wind them up. I usually would take them off, but, you know, um, actually probably could normally take them off, especially the S bus in, but uh, I've decided to stop doing that for the time being because customers I feel may down the road say, hey, well, I needed it and you took it off and it's not fair, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wind it up just like that, okay? And uh, we're gonna cut it. So let me just do that, sorry. I left it a little too long here. Let me go ahead and just cut it. Cool. Uh, right about here, doesn't need anything special. There we go. I'm gonna fold one, one way, one the other way so that they're folded away from each other. And then I'm gonna go ahead and heat shrink that down and that will be done, okay? So let me go ahead and do that first. Okay, that's too small of a heat shrink. Let me get something a little bit bigger. Here, we'll use this one here. This should be fine. Go ahead and run that over, there we go. Make sure that we've covered everything and we have. So there's that. I'm gonna cut this here. All right, and I'm just gonna turn the heat gun on. Shrink this down. And therefore, if the customer ever wants it, he can just pull that heat shrink off. It's gonna slide right off the back if you want to take it off. You don't have to cut anything or anything else. It'll just slide right off. It's kind of like a uh, cork or a screwdriver. You just twist it, and it'll come out. Okay, so there's that. So we're gonna just pinch that closed there. Twist it a little bit more. We can just put it wherever we want, okay? So the only things that we really need are these right here. So we've got black, red, and green. So it's going to blend in with what HCLRC, our HCLRC did. And what they've done is they've soldered it right to here. The only problem is, is I don't like splicing wires if I don't have to. I kind of get my, why is my iron not turning on? Let me see what I got here. Come on. Talk to me, Goose. Well, I gotta get my, uh... there we go. We gotta lower this down. Make sure this is getting hot. Come on. Mm. Oh, yep, that's hot. It's getting there, good, perfect. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna actually remove the VTX, 
The screwdriver is so awesome, man. If you just take the bits out, it fits perfectly to cover these fasteners, these lock nuts that are right here. So, I mean, this is just a piece of cake. I'm going to take this off because I'm going to remove the wire HDLRC put only because I just want to direct solder this thing. And I don't want to have to crimp it on there. So I'm going to pull this VTX just, just kind of move it over for just a minute. Just like that. Nothing big. I just want to get right here to this area. I'm going to take these three wires out. Oh, whoops. Sorry. No. I moved this the wrong way. I apologize. I'm going to take these three wires out that are over here. Okay. And we're going to put our three wires from here on there. All right. And I'll give them some length. Uh, let's see. They left it that long. So I'll leave it that long. Uh, why not? Let's just do something like that maybe. Okay. Give it just a little bit of room. Actually, yeah, I'll do that. All right. So let's do that. Soldering irons heat up. So we can go ahead and just uh, strip these real quick. Put them in some uh, flux paste. Get them tinned, and boom, we're good to go. Everything here is going to be awesome. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, where is my flux paste? It is, there it is. Okay, so we're going to get our flux paste right here. I'm going to go ahead and just dip these three in, just like that. Come out and just twist it, all right? And the reason I don't twist it before I dip it in the flux paste is I want that flux paste to get it between all the strands. And if I twist them prior to doing that, then <clears throat> they're going to get tightened up and that flux paste may not make it in there. Okay, now with that said, we'll go ahead and get our helping hands. And again, we sell all of this stuff on the website, guys. If you need anything like this, just go to our website at cyclonefpg.com. Look under soldering supplies, under tools. You'll find everything from these helping hands to the flux paste to the soldering iron. Everything is there available for you. So you don't have to worry about where you're going to go, how you're going to get. Or if you want to get the exact same equipment I use, I don't use expensive stuff at all. The entire soldering we work station is like, I think, 69 bucks. Um, the soldering flux uh, paste, let me move this one out of the way, is, is very inexpensive too, very inexpensive. So I try to keep everything that I use is available for sale. It's available for purchase even on our site and it's all at a awesome price. You're not going to really go to Amazon and find it cheaper or anywhere else. I said I don't think so. We try to stay competitive. It uh, doesn't mean I don't I don't miss a sale. Maybe somebody's doing, but my purpose is to try to keep it as competitive as I can. All right, we're going to twist this up here. All right, and now it's time to remove what's on here already. So let me grab the um, tweezers, clean off the tip of the soldering iron, and let's get to it. Right. So we're going to do one. Hold on. Let me get in here. One. There we go. There's the S bus. And two will be the five, five volt. Come on, come on, there we go. Gotta put this little rubber ring back on there. Though. There we go. And three will be the ground. Okay, so let's get that. My iron is not hot enough. I'm gonna up it up here because every time I try to take off HGLRC solder, it's always a task for me. And then let me get my magnifying goggles too because I can't see where the darn. Do that and that. Here we go, put the goofy goggles on. There we go. Perfect. Get some light going. And we're golden now. All right. So I'll take the ground here. There we go. All right. So this wire's out. Not needed. I'm just going to set that aside. I'm going to clean the tip of this uh, soldering iron real quick. There we go. Perfect. Now I'm going to add a little bit of solder of my own just so that I know I've got something here that's gonna melt easily. So let's do that, it should be all of one second. There we go, okay. And now let's get the, um, here it is. Let's go ahead and get this done. These are a little long actually, so I'm gonna trim these back a millimeter or so. What the heck went flying over there? I have no idea. All right, so let's do this. There we go. I'm gonna take this one off. Take this one off. And we'll take this one off right here. There we go. I swear I sound like somebody pulled up, but I guess not. Okay. So green will go on the outside where the S bus was, the yellow one. So we're going to go ahead and go in that order so we don't cross over. So here we go. Put green on first. It's done. Put the 5 volt on next. It's done here. Oh, easy. And then we'll put the ground on. And again, that should be. Done. Easy. Perfect. Everything's done. We can now turn the soldering iron off. All right. Guys, I even sell those if you need the magnifying thing like I have because I know maybe you don't want to admit you're getting old, but my, I'm, I'm sure my eyesight sucks. So I get it. All right. So let's wind this around. I'm going to put our VTX back where it belongs. 
Uh, looks like maybe I lost. Let me see. Uh, missing a third. Is that right? Yeah, I'm missing two of the uh, rubber standoff pieces here. So uh, let's see. I'm supposed to have three of them. I see two of these. Where is that? Where'd they go? Uh, one, two, one, two, three. Well, oh, there's one. And then I'm missing the other one. I'm trying to find these things here. I'll put this one on. There we go. All right, now we can put it back on. Everything's the same. Everything's leveled. Put these wires out of the way so they don't get cut up in the screws there. There we go. Put our lock fasteners back on. One there. One here. Say one there. Hold on. Good. Come on. There we go. All right. So I'm just gonna kind of gently tighten these, just until they're flush, until the top of the screw is flush with the uh, fastener, and that looks about right. Let's get these ones and this one. Yep, looks good. All those are flush. <clears throat> and so now basically all we got is we've got our uh, receiver. And the question is where we want to tuck it in. Well, I'm going to tell you flat out that um, this is a rear or lower mount unit. Uh, so, sorry, a bottom mount uh, battery. So, um, uh, bottom mount battery frame. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put all these here. This is the customer is going to get this part back. So, I mean, I have, I have done without issue put the receiver at the top for all I care. I mean, honestly, uh, it makes no difference as far as the quality of how this is gonna work if I do that. So in this case, um, I'm gonna probably opt to uh, let the customer figure out where he wants to put it. They will, they will even tuck them down here and run the wires up. We can do that too. I really don't necessarily like doing that sometimes. So unless you, unless you have an objection to putting the and uh, the putting the receiver on the top, I, know, I tell you what, I don't like these prints at all. But it's, it's not an HDLR thing. I just don't like the prints, period. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to place this, right? And I'm going to see if I want to put it like this, because then I can run. I may put this here and run these wires down. I'm going to play with this a little bit, because I really want to see what my options are. So if I run this down here... All right, I'm gonna put it like that. It should stay out of the way. That'd be nice, then I can come up on here. And then as far as this goes, I wonder if I can get enough room to get this through. Ah, come on, squeeze through there. I think I can. All right, if I do that, there, it slides down that slot there, you see? So then I could just do this, and honestly, be honest with you, it's it's really doesn't have, it won't have any effect on the quality at all. As a matter of fact, I mean, it won't. It's not. It's not. Does not matter if I put this at the top, even if it crashes. It's going to be heat shrunk, so it'll be protected. All right. So for the sake, oh, well, except that I've got to put my antennas on. Maybe that angle is going to be too tough on the antennas, but we'll see. Once I heat shrink these and uh, uh, glue these on, and heat shrink them, we should be okay. But let me just get these back on real quick. one. Just need to get this to snap in. There we go. Okay. So the antennas are in. So uh, we can take this unit and we can put it like this. All right. And we can run the antennas a little, a little lower down here and then come back up on the back right and zip and then heat shrink those in which would be fine if the customer does not plan on putting something up here see the problem is, is i see too many people put them here and this is starting to cook right so the rule of thumb here at least in my business is don't put them where um your uh, vtx is because they'll start to cook 
they get hot. I mean, that's just the way it is. Now, let me see if this is wide enough to go over that. That should be, let me, yeah, it should work. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do that, and then if the customer wants to move it, he can, but at least I know that by setting it like this, I know it's gonna be working, and it will be able to function like that without any issues. No concerns whatsoever as to how it'll last or if it'll be okay. Um, it's gonna last just fine. So let me go ahead, I'm gonna turn the heat gun on, get this ready. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot some glue right into this area. All right, it's gonna take just a minute for the heat gun to warm up though, so we're gonna be doing that. And at the same time, I'm gonna go ahead and save all these wires because like I said before, Free Sky uses very good wires and there's no sense in throwing them out, all right? Um, and while that's happening, we can take all this, stick it back here, turn this like this, because this is the way it goes. All right. And then just plan your layout here. So even if I lay this out this way, wires will fit just fine underneath, just like that. We'll heat shrink it, run these down, come back up here, like this. Just like that. And then we will be able to heat shrink these on the outside and you'll be just fine. And we will not have our, our receiver against any of the heat uh, from the uh, VTX. Okay, so that's good. So now let me just disconnect this. I need to get it ready for heat shrink. All right, yeah. Uh, I really want the heat gun to hurry up, so I guess I should have started it before. Usually I have this on. Um, and again, if you need heat gun, we have those on the site too. Uh, but it's gonna take just a minute. It's on, it just takes a little bit of time. So let me get that ready. Okay. And then this can go away. All right, all right guys, it would actually be done by now probably if I had that heat gun on first. So my apologies to you. But I guess I can clean up my bench while I'm doing this. This with the customer. Actually, I'm gonna give the customer the wires. He'd probably use them down the road if he needs. So here you go. Put my electric screwdriver back and see how my heat gets doing. Come on already, hurry up. All right, we'll give it a second. All right, what else do we got? Uh, oh, yeah. You guys want to see something cool? This is what I'm finishing now. The customer asked for me to design these for the back, so we put a um, uh, antenna mount on the back here, uh, and uh, that'll have the Immortal T on it. And then uh, this, I'm actually going to configure this one my, for me that will run the DJI, or yeah, the DJI setup. I'm going to modify that frame a little bit, so that'd be pretty neat. Let me just come on already. Mm. One more minute, I think. Okay, let's see what else we got. Hmm. All I want to do is get just enough glue out here, and then I'll hit it with the heat gun if I have to. There we go. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this on now. I'm getting just enough. I mean, this thing doesn't have to be such a weenie about it. There we go. Because all I want to do is get enough glue out here that I can run the heat gun, right? Once I run the heat gun, it's going to spread that glue easily. So here it goes. That's it. Just let, this, let that glue spread out there. I'm going to get exactly what I want as if the heat gun was fully heated. There you go. Okay. All right. Now that that's in there, we're going to take our heat shrink. Let's cool this down. Just a little bit. I used to cut the side so it would go around it, but if you're not careful and you start heating it up, it'll start folding all over the place and then it doesn't give a good seal. So this way at least I know it's still good. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reheat this and that glue is going to reheat itself and it's going to bind the entire thing uh, properly. So let me go ahead and spread those antennas out. Now watch. It'll almost make like a seal. All right, so here it goes.
Okay, and I do the back first so that I can press it down and get that glue to just kind of spread. Now I've got the front, there we go, the top, whatever, the top, I don't know, however you want to do it. Right, spread that, see that glue is gonna form around those antennas so well, it'll hold them nicely in place. There we go, so we're good to go there. This is ready to go. Now we're gonna go ahead and take our drone. Okay, we're gonna put our plate on because we're done messing around with it. So we're gonna put our plate on here, all right? Actually, hold on a second, that's not necessarily true. I need to go ahead and there's my bind button. So what I'm gonna do, I have one or two options here is I can, I think what I'll do is I'll take the option of cutting a small piece of double-sided tape, right? Something like that, for example. All right, let me put that back up here. All right, now I'm gonna put this on this plate. I don't understand why here in a second, but I will put that kind of, why can't I cut straight? Hold on, it's gotta be straight. There, let's try it. That's a little straighter at least. All right, so we're gonna put this right about here, okay? And it really doesn't matter, but what, what does matter to me is that it gets on there and then I've got room right about there. Oh, I'll put it right here, let's just say. Okay, because here's what I do. I will not hot glue uh, directly to the um, frame, right? I will put the double-sided tape and then I'll hot glue to the double-sided tape. Now, the, the, the double-sided tape, this Gorilla tape will stick pretty well when it's, once it's set and everything, but I'm gonna go ahead and just drop this glue right here. All right, just like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the heat gun again, because the glue gun is still a little, not as hot as I want it to be, so I'm just gonna heat this glue up just a little bit. Okay, there it goes. Now I'm gonna press it right where I want it on here, just like that. Okay. Now, this is gonna form a very good bond with the um, double-sided tape. Double-sided tape is gonna cool from the heating and it's gonna stick really well uh, to the uh, frame. Now I'm gonna put, the last thing I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna put um, the, uh, I'm gonna put this right here. I'm just gonna zip tie this in. Okay, make sure, keep it off of the bind button, but make sure it's got a good connection right there. Perfect, that's it. Now, if anybody wants to say that this poses a risk for the receiver, I'll be more than happy to hear that argument, but I'm going to tell you right now that it doesn't. Uh, nothing that um, placing it loosely anywhere else would solve. Uh, and to be honest with you, um, uh, and let, like I said, unless I only do this because if the customer wants to move it, then he can pick a spot that is best for him. But for me, I may sit here and try to wiggle everything around. He may think that's not where I want it anyway. So this just makes it easier for everybody. Let me go ahead and send these wires down. I'm gonna send the right one to the right and the left one to the left. So let's do that real quickly. Here's the left. And we'll send it this way. Here's the right. Send it this way. Shrink. It's not going to be wide enough. Let's take the wider heat shrink. Come. This is the first one here. And by the way, if you decide you want to mount it inside, you can always turn this upside down. I meant to show you that before, but the problem is, is with the heat shrink here and this one, this is going to hit, but I do want it to, but in most cases, you should just be able to turn it upside down since it's the same either way, and you could put this underneath. I just don't care to do that because, like I said, I don't, there's no problem for me in this, and uh, I need to put this screw in here, so let me just put these screws in real quick so I can hold this in place, put the camera back in, line this up.
let's get an antenna one here set. Ten and two set. There you go. It's clean, it looks good. Excellent. All right, so we're going to go ahead and close the rest of this up now and power it on make sure that we see all the lights we need to see and the customer can take it from there once it arrives All right, so there we go. Everything looks good. Very happy with the way this came out. And everything underneath is clean and looking well. So now what we're gonna do is just power this up, make sure everything attached with no problem. Okay, so let me do that real quick. There we go, got our lights going and absolutely have no problem. So there we go guys, okay, so everything looks good. Let me go ahead and turn that off. So you don't interfere with our VTX. So I'm going to box this up real quick for the customer and uh, that should take care of it. All right. So that's a real quick video. Uh, just like I said, a real simple way to get this done. Um, and, uh, you know, it's very easy for the customers to say, you know what? I don't want up here. I want to shove it somewhere back here. Fine. No problem. It's easy. You just take that off. And because it's glued to the double sided tape and not to the board itself, and you just lift that up, the double sided tape will come off the board and you're good to go. But to be honest with you, I, I flew them like these and I like it like this. I like everything to be right where I can get to it if I need to bind or anything. Other than that, man, enjoy your brand new quad. Thank you very much for the business, by the way. Uh, and, uh, and I also want to thank uh, Julio Rodriguez for, uh, for uh, recommending us to this customer. Um, and that's it. I would shout out to the customer. The problem is, is I found out very quickly that sometimes when I do these shout outs, somebody's wife hears about it and they didn't know that the husband was buying a drone. So um, I've learned to just not say that. But thank you to Julio Torres for recommending us to this customer. And this customer, I'm sure, as I get to know you better, I may or may not say your name in the future. All right, guys, if you have any questions, as always, please go to our Facebook group. That has actually been very successful. I want to thank uh, Juan Pablo for that one. He's, uh, that was his recommendation to try to get people answers faster. So, And that's been really good, actually. We've seen about a 50% decrease in uh, um, support tickets uh, because of the fact that people are going to our uh, group now. So go there, sign up or whatever, and you can find a lot of help. And you can be on anything, okay? Um, and then uh, if, you, uh, if you would, please, as always, please... Uh, follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Those are the things that help us out the most and show some support, right? God bless, guys. Be safe. Spend time with your family. You never know how much time you have left, so please make the most of it. Also, I want to give a shout-out to my son, Jaden. Actually, all my sons, Ashton, Lennon, and Jaden. Jaden had his uh, ninth birthday on the uh, 18th a few days ago, and then yesterday uh, broke his leg in two different places riding an electric skateboard while he was sitting, mind you. Um, but he decided to try to go head-on with a mailbox. So the bricks won, but he's a champion and walked Sorry, didn't walk away from it. Um, uh, limped, how, how, whatever you call it. Just went away, and uh, he'll be getting his cast next week. They've got to let this one go down. Um, and fractures his ankle, too, on the other leg. So, I mean, this guy, boy, when he goes big, he goes big. Anyways, God bless to all my kids, too. And uh, I miss you guys. I'm sorry I had to let you go today. Uh, but I look forward to seeing you again next Friday uh, for the week. Until then, uh, stay in touch, right? All right, guys, peace, take care, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.